the Beretta Brothers. Hi. Uh, it's just me. Disappointed? Where's Gene? This promises to be an enjoyable program, says Marshall Grover. Well, I hope so. I mean, it's just me here. I hope you guys are going to be okay with that. Um, we do, of course, have our very special guest, Lewis Henry Mitchell. Very exciting. Uh, but uh, at the moment, it's it's just me. Um, so I'll do a shameless plug. You can go to the BerettaBrothers.com to see all kinds of uh, our, our past shows. You can see our past shows. You can uh, see some photos, some video footage, you know. Um, hi. What's that? What's that say? S. Rackle Productions. Hey, Bill, where's Jane? Jane? It's a good question. I don't know where Jane is. Uh, oh, yes. Thank you, Jesse. I got a haircut. Uh, appreciate it. Jesse's asking if I got a haircut. Hope you like it. Uh, Megan, thank you. Yes, George Harrison in the back. That's from uh, Saturday Night Live years ago when George Harrison was on. And I believe that is actually uh, Michael Frith holding a doll of Kermit on his head. Thank you, Lauren. Likes my haircut. But let's get to the point. So uh, I did I do already do the shameful plug? Go to the BerettaBrothers.com. Uh, but actually, before we get to Lewis, Henry Mitchell, I'd like to introduce you to another artist uh, who has also been a part of Sesame Street. Um, well, should I just bring him on? Sure. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Gene Beretta. Gene, what, Gene, what are you doing? Hi, Bill. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just working in my studio. Oh, what are you working on? Oh, some just some new character designs. Oh, uh, really? For a new program I'm working on. It's, they're these like lemon mints, mintians. And, mintians? Uh, yeah. And uh, this one over here is really despicable. He just, he wants them to kind of, these lemon mints to just melt anywhere, you know, like. You mean like warm. a lozenge? Yeah, like car seats, when they get warm, they'll melt there, uh, you know, underneath you if you're sleeping on them, you know, South America, anywhere that's warm, it'll melt. And this These is are lemon mintians. Yeah, this is despicable. This is me. And I want to just, you know, keep mints melting in your mouth. And so it's the campaign of this character. And, and his main goal is to say, let's freeze them to make it work. So the project is called Frozen. And I've been uh, working on it for some time now, and I think it's getting places. They've got a cool lemon mint dog who wears Ray-Bans and smokes, and he's a real party animal. Uh, so I think, you know, with all these vehicles combined, it could really be something. Uh, it's it's cool. It's certainly clever. Have you, have you heard of anything else like that out there at all? Is there anything no, else no, no, that no. competes with it? I model this one after Hitler. Because he's really despicable. Hitler lemon. Mintians. Mintians. Lemon mints. I you know, you might want to just uh you might want to Google um minions. Have you heard no, of Mintians? Mintians. No, no, I know I know yours is called Mintians. Yeah. But uh which is kind of weird because it's lemon. It's not really mint, they're not really mint flavored. They're mints, lemon mints. And no, no, mints, no, mints are mint flavored. You don't just you don't have a lemon mint. That would be lemon mint flavored mints. Mints are mint flavored, right? But that's not even the point. Don't even worry about that. The, the point is, is no wait wait. I think you're just missing a big thing here. Is that there's a, there's actually animated movies. There's one called. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna believe it. But there's one called Despicable Me. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, and in it, and in it, yeah, are these little yellow guys? Okay, called minions. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. 
All right. So well, you know what? If you get a chance, you know what? I love the idea. If you get a chance, look out, Google folks, it. Look out for the movie Frozen. It should be out I hopefully that, in the next year or two. That too. You might want to Google that too. Um, but why but you visit? It sounds great. It sounds great. But the reason I, I, you know, I was hoping we could talk is that, you know, we have uh, Lewis coming on later. Right. Uh, who's obviously a big influence on Sesame Street. But, um, oh, wait, you know what? Let me just see. The Minion Tic Tacs are banana flavored. See, see, they're talking about Minions, Gene. There's a whole, I'm telling you, there's a whole thing out there about mm. Minions and, you know what? No, let's not just, we don't have to worry about it right now. Um, but what I want to talk about is your animation on Sesame Street. I don't know how many people... What are you doing? <laughs> what? You, you didn't even look to check it out. My heart's not in it anymore. Oh my God. You cannot. Where am I going to look? Up. Where am I going to check it out? On Google. You can go online. Oh, stop. Now you're just being ridiculous. What are you? Uh, what are you in an iceberg or something? <laughs> <laughs> Come to my iceberg studio. <laughs> um, but let's talk about your animation stuff before Lewis gets here. I want okay. people to see it. I want them All to right. know what it's like, how you do it. So when what we what uh, actually I want to ask you something maybe people don't know. What was the first thing you remember? Can you even remember drawing it or maybe a story of the first thing you remember like hearing about that you did drawing or the first thing I my first memory of drawing yeah maybe is there one well mom told me that i when i was like three i drew a big purple elephant on the wall next to my crib with purple crayon that's right so, that's i wonder if she left it up there because she used to just leave things because yeah. she I loved know. it you did that kind of stuff so your big purple elephant yeah so i didn't then i would just copy cartoons i would see on tv like what like that like the early Beatles cartoon or oh. the Hanna Barbera cartoons, you know. Warner Brothers. Yeah, some mainly the Hanna Barbera ones were easier to draw for someone my age. They were oh. more geometrical and simple. Right. Or trace them and say right. that I drew them. Right, but that's yeah. how you. That's how a lot of people start, right? You kind of trace yeah. things and try and figure out how they do those certain lines or eyes or right yeah it's i mean it's why a lot of fine artists repaint the masters because they learn at, by doing it they learn the process of the masters and eventually they incorporate incorporate that into what becomes their own style right learning from it you know why did the eyes get positioned this way well now it makes sense while i'm drawing it, it couldn't have worked any other way things like that but why do you think you'd like to draw so much because mm -hmm. ever since you were a little kid, that's what you love to do. And I always tell, I always talk about how we would go to the beach. We had the rent of the beach house and I would go to the beach, but you loved the sunroom and you would draw in there all day long. You know? <laughs> it was the wrong name for that room because I didn't get any sun. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm so pale is because I never went out in the sun. But you, uh, but you always love to draw. Why do you think you like to draw so much? I don't know. Probably just the way of uh, you're about to hear my cat use a <laughs> litter box. It's all right. You don't have to point it out. We probably wouldn't have noticed. You will listen. How do I know that's the cat using the litter box? Now I do. He's, actually, he's sanding some furniture. Yeah, yeah. It's like working on a little, some yeah, a little end table. I don't. You know, it's probably like a lot of artists. It's the way you, the best way you find to express yourself and communicate ideas hmm. and learn about the world. And I guess that's why I don't know. Cause I used to, and I mentioned this before, but I, I used to like to watch you draw because of the expressions you would make. So I think you're living out stories in your head. That's what it yeah. seemed like to me. Like you were, you know, expressing like, ideas and tell, yeah, they're alive in there and you're trying to get them out. Maybe. It's really funny. It's like I'm I'm being real. I'm feeling really shy about talking about myself. All of a sudden, well, that's all right. I, I do all sorts of assemblies all the time, but for some reason, yeah. maybe because I'm asking you. Probably. 
You suck. Yeah, you stupid. You should know this. You know what? How long have you known me? You know what? You suck. <laughs> <laughs> you don't draw good. Yeah. What was you that whole what? India thing? That's so stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who makes you go like this all the time? Is this your career, huh? <laughs> 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 but let's talk about the animation before before <laughs> before Lewis gets here. The, um, I wanted you to show some. I actually talk about the, what it's like to to make animations for Sesame because there's a whole process, right? Yeah. What is what's the first? How did you how did you connect with that Sesame Street? Well, I I was I moved back east from LA. That's a whole other story. But I was trying to figure out what to do next, and Kevin Clash said, um, "Why don't I introduce you?" Because he knew you know that I drew and did animation. He said, "Well, why don't I introduce you to Arlene Sherman, who was one of the producers at Sesame Street? She handles." Because yeah, I had said to Kevin, "Gene goes like this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, "Oh, you're talking about your brother who does this all the time." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so she she handles all the short segments and the animations and all that stuff. So I s set up a meeting to make this long story short. I, I met with her and she said, well, I'd love to see what you, what ideas you come up with. And she gave me something like this, which they have every year of the show, which is the curriculum for the show. Uh, for example, they said they're going to be teaching backward, forward, before, after, color oh. with failure. Near or far, and all that kind of stuff. What they're, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And they had this big thick manual about all the research that they're, staff does on why these ideas are important for kids and things so you don't just show up with just any random idea you're just right. based on what they're planning on teaching that year right 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 and then so then do you pick what you want to focus on do, like you come up with ideas because you go oh you know what i think i like doing near and far because i thought of blah 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 yeah well, that's so i made up like a list of different ideas many more than i knew that she would Pick, what's one you but, didn't what's one they didn't pick uh, la, la, la. uh problem solving guessing i have to wear the other glasses i got my computer glasses and my regular glasses <laughs> um problem solving guessing from clues a detective scoping out an area in an island he knows there's life around there there's an unnatural clearing old fire an old fire is warm Berries on the trees and bushes are gone. In some evacua ex excavation, suddenly he realizes it's a huge footprint and the giant shows up. The man screams and runs away and the giant says, come back, you're just in time for tea. And he's holding some tea in a <laughs> on a cart. <laughs> so he, <laughs> he wanted to uh, spend some time with the guy, but he scared him off. But you learn all the things, obviously, that would clue you into the fact that there's some kind of life there. Right. So you can see why that that wasn't chosen. So so um well you know what I'm just going to put it up there cuz uh hey Johnny baby. He loves full and empty. That's one of my favorites too. I'll um show that. I'll show you you. Show, Should we show that now? Was this wait was this this wasn't your first one. This is your second one? I worked I did I've made five films and I that was in season 28 and 29. Just luckily before they changed the whole format of the show in season 30 and they didn't show nearly as many um, short films. So I got in there right on time. Scott Joy was just wondering they passed on the lemon mintins. Ah, that's a new idea, but it's no more because obviously somebody I else did a it. Point on something. Yeah. Scott. yeah. Bring up a sore point. So wait, so what are you going to show? Are you going to show I'll show that. Well, why don't I show the empty full one? Yeah, so, show that John brought that. Hey, John. Uh, so this, I'm sh showing the difference between empty and full. And what I'll explain in a minute is that I had to do each one of these in a month's time, excuse me, which meant recording all of the audio, charting out all of the, you know, which frame is his mouth open like this versus right. this. At, which is really lengthy. Draw hundreds and hundreds of drawings. Right, but, 
Can I just interrupt for a second? Here's yeah. a question, and I, maybe you can just wrap it into this. Uh, Eve Cunning asks, which animation software do you use if you use software? Good question. When I was doing these, I didn't. Uh, I, these are all drawn traditionally, but I took them to this production house in Philly that I don't even, it was an older software. I mean, this was back in 97 and 98. Hmm. And they, instead of um, like in traditional animation, you have a background and then you draw the characters on a transparent piece of celluloid and place the character on top of the background and photograph them together. This, I just, I drew the characters on white paper because then they, when they scanned it into the computer, they could key out all of the, um, all the whiteness. And then they'd have the isolated character and then place it on the background. So I don't right. know what they use, but they handled at least that part. Right. And I, I hired the only people. But these I are hired, all drawn. You drew yeah, each. All yeah. hand drawn. And so I hired somebody to do the coloring. Otherwise, I would have never made it. Right. But what you'll see in these animations is it's a mixture of moments where I was able to animate full bodies and things like that. And then other moments where you do that, like Hanna-Barbera cheat, where somebody goes to grab something, but you just isolate the arm. <laughs> right. <laughs> and do that. You don't have to draw the body over and over and over. So yeah, you have yeah. mix of those things. All right. So let's take a All look. Right. Show that one. Empty full. Empty and So good. Okay. That was, uh, I hired a real opera singer to do the good opera singer, and I did the, the bad and opera And you were singer. the bad one. But my, I love, there's so many little things in there. I love the little bark in the dog's throat, his little Adam's apple. Goes, <laughs> right. um, Mom and Arthur are in there in the audience. All right, I'm in there with my, the woman I was engaged to at the time, Julia. <laughs> a lot of people, there's a lot of people actually in the audience. So I go back and look. I think you're probably in there with Christina. But it's so good, and I love the angles too. Like I love when you come back and you're on that you you angled at the opera house, so it's we're not just always you know straight in, and it's mm -hmm. just really good. I love that one, so good. But it was yeah, it was just uh, like you could see you could see areas where I had to kind of uh, take shortcuts. Um, right. Um, let's show more. Wait, I because I I'm, I'm worried we're going to run out of time. Okay. Yeah. Let's show let's show another one. Let's show see in space. Maybe talk a little bit about that and show that one. Okay, so see in space. That's the one I kind of broke down here, so that uh, oh, I won't even. You know, I won't even show the uh, what I had to do for see in space. I, for, I because I wrote and recorded the music for it. Actually, I'll show it. This is sorry. Uh, let me just put up a thing real quick. Um, yeah, uh, anime game sixteen. No, uh, no, these are all Gene's creations. These are all things that come out of his brain and his weird <laughs> mind. Uh, nothing to do with me. This is all Gene. Just like when we were kids. Gene would create the situations and I would just get to be a part of them. So this would be, um, I would record everything and just, these were time sheets and you would have all the frames down here and then you would write in the dialogue like easy solution. And then you would time out how, long, how many frames you would need for each of these letters so that um, you would know that if he's saying hello, the he, would be in frame two and the L would be in frame four and O would be in frame six, things like that. Jesse's probably watching and he knows all about this stuff because he's worked with the great John Chris Falusi. So um, right. 
Yes, John. John does their Dutch angles. Thank you. I was thinking of the Swedish angles, but yes, you're right, Dutch. <laughs> so I wrote this song all about the things in space that begin with the letter C. And <clears throat> I, I drew a very rough storyboard. <clears throat> it shows you, uh, you've got the lyrics down here. I won't tell them all now, but you've got the, the moon that looks like the sea. You zoom out. And <clears throat> you've got Billy and Christina here looking up at the moon. Oh, there are silhouettes of them as lovers looking up in the moon. I, I had to place this over top. They look up there. There's a shooting star. There's a captain and a chimp. And <clears throat> can I just put something up real quick? Go ahead. Hey, Gene, from David, he said, to, hey, Gene, did Sesame Street hire you? And then you were responsible for hiring actors and the animation company? Or was Sesame Street involved in that part as well? No, once they said uh, you can do these films, uh, they had gave me a budget and I had to uh, use the budget to hire everybody and find the production facilities. And, you know, I had I played most of the instruments in the song, uh, aside from the drummer and a lead guitarist. But when you uh, wrote this song, Sea in Space, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and Dan Meacham, our friend produced it for me. He also did the words empty and full in, in that's that. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, come on, you gotta show it. I don't want people to miss okay. these, these are good. All right, and then, okay, so all these things, I'll skip this, all these things in space that begin with C, constellation, a comet, all of that. All right, so let's just watch it since we're gonna be short on time. Ready? Yeah. And I'm I'm singing it too with my like a country wrote voice. It. You wrote it, sang it, me. There's a letter C out there in space. The moon looks like a crest and it's a faraway place. There are lots of things out there in space that start with C. Like the captain of a spaceship. And captain starts with C. She has a chimp on her crew. And chimp starts with C too. Yes, captain starts with C. And she's out there in space. Among the constellations that she can help you trace. You can trace a constellation by connecting many stars. A man goes a comet shooting past Mars. Yes, there's a letter C out there in space. She can see it from the capsule with a smile on her face. They will travel in a capsule, and capsule starts with C. So if you see a C in space, <laughs> well, that's where that C should be. C. So good. You know, that reminds me of like the great animations when I, we were kids. Like I would, it's such, that's such a good one. I got to show you something here. Scott Joy, you have no idea. Oh, thanks, Scott. That's you have no idea. Wow. Ever since we were kids and growing up and through now, I mean, it's amazing. Um, come on, more, so, more, more, more. We want more. Right, we I've want got, more. I, I didn't like one of the one of them, one of the five, so I'm not showing that, but I'll show you. Oh, real quick. Here's something like when I was doing the car the characters for that, I would just make up these color sheets so they would be oh. consistent for the colorer. I'm really proud to say I gave this woman named Suzanne Twinings, her first animation job. She was one of my colorists. And now she's gone on to be one of the, the great uh, stop motion animation animators. She's worked on Coraline and Paranorman wow. and lots of others. Yeah. So wow. she was she was going to school in Philly and I hired her. So uh, wow. I gave her her first job. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, here's one all about uh, the number 10, all about a blueberry beaked budgie and the number 10. Oh, here's another great one. Ten. A number ten from Tennessee kissed a blueberry beaked budgie. And after that, he laid in bed while ten blueberries grew on his head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The doctor said, I have a cure. Stay in bed for ten days more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When that old ten fell well again, he jumped and counted one to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now number ten will always love all creatures great and small. 
But he will never kiss another fruit flavored animal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 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 <laughs> Number ten from Tennessee. Ten. <laughs> you know, and I then, noticed uh, that's um uh, and maybe because you were talking about how quickly you needed to turn these around, or was it just the choice to go with kind of the the less kind of colored backgrounds so that the characters would pop more, or was that just time? Uh, th for that one, I you know I don't remember honestly, but I I just think there was no reason to have anything behind them for that. Uh, the other ones all did have full backgrounds. Tan. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. <laughs> she gives it a tan. The cat, they, they love the cat on, I'm um, guessing. Oh, with the waggly tail? Yeah. And then this one was teaching the difference between none, some, and all. And it's, uh, it's a... It's Which is a, the one you said you didn't like? The animal picnic. What? Where the squirrels show up, they want to eat the guy's uh, food. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I don't like it. You so no. We actually needed the sound of a kid and we went to a local, um, we lucked out, we went to the local school when they were letting kids out and we just said to the parent, can your kid come over to this house where we're recording and just give us a few like, oh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. So here's the Washington one. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is a, your friend, our friend, what you got when you went to school with Steve Chaffee. He does... Right? Yeah, Steve Chioffi did the voice of George Washington. This is the, this one. I uh, Museum of Modern Image did a program about a year ago, I think. Craig Sheman invited me and two other Sesame Street anime uh, short film people to talk about their stuff, and this one went over the best, I think. So we'll All see right. you. Here we go. I, General Washington, will lead my my oh my <clears throat> men. This won't work. All of you are in the front of the boat, and none of you are in the back. I need some in the back. Well, no. Now all of you are in the back, and none are in the front. Wait, take a time out. Once again, all of you are in the front, and none of you are in the back. I need some of you in the front, and some of you in the back. Deja vu. All in the back again. None in the front. Okay, easy solution. Cat lovers in front, dog lovers in back. Perfect. Finally, some in the front and some in the back. We can go. Now, how do we get rid of all this ice? You know what? We can me? go. <laughs> we can do. Uh, what, what sold me on having Steve do the voice was uh, on the phone call. The way he said, "Easy solution." <laughs> yeah, solution. Solution. I love that. Yeah, that's um, so good. What else? Come on. That's it. No, I did five. I don't have the other one here. You suck. I told you, <laughs> you suck. Come on. I don't have it. A... A... All right. All right. Well, you're going to have to perform it live. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, talk amongst yourself. I'll get it right here. You will? <gasps> no, right. actually, I, I don't. don't. Oh, I don't. You suck. I'd have to plug this whole thing back in. Forget it. We don't oh, have problem. Right. Um, plus, we want to get on to our guest. All right. But some, uh, yes, but um, it, there was a question. I just hear maybe this is how we wrap it up. Would I ever do more animation in the future? You know, I'm just not equipped for it right now. I mean, I'm so concerned. Mentally. Well, no, I don't have <laughs> mentally light table. Uh, plus, I'm just so consumed with my picture book work. Um, mentally, but uh, maybe you know, who knows? Not equipped. It could all change, and I'm sure that I'd have to be much more proficient in um, computer generated animation. And just draw, all... just drawing in general, you need to be much better. Yeah, true, and I need improvement. Here's something real quick. Paul Feelinger, you know, the animator who did Tiny Little Super Guy? Yes. He's, a, he's a good friend, and he lives nearby. Um, and back in the 80s, I went to visit him to say and show him some storyboards. I was thinking of doing an independent film. And 
did you ever get those moments where you get somebody that gives you the blunt, a really blunt uh, bit of information Frank and throws God. you back at first? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you realize how important that they weren't trying to be malicious, but it was just what you needed to hear. Yeah. So I said, so I showed him the thing and he goes, so what do you think? And he goes, um, but the first thing you need to do is learn to draw. <laughs> <laughs> and I just went. Oh man. Yeah. But oh, it made man. sense. I can see that now, but yeah. he meant it all in, in I'm a sure. very constructive yeah. way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's great. So, Anyway, but speaking of great illustrators and artists. Someone who's learned to draw, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have our special guest coming. Do you want to introduce him? Gene, that was great. We should. We have to do more of that. More about okay. you. And I, only me did, and that's I want to interview you more. I know, but I want to interview you more about other stuff. So. All right. We can do my books. All right. Oh, by the oh, way. Oh, you have books? Yeah. I got a new puppet. You have to ask me about that later. Later. And my pumpkins haven't started to uh, deteriorate yet. I don't think flops. Lewis really cares about your pumpkins, Gene. I think we need to get <laughs> Lewis on. Lewis Henry Mitchell. He's the um, creative director of character design at Sesame Street. And, and more. He, and much more. And many more. We're going to talk about as much as we can, can fit into this show because yeah. he's, he's done a slew of work. So without further ado, would you all please welcome Lewis Henry Mitchell! Woo! Bravo! Bravo! <laughs> hey, Lewis. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me on. Man, I, I, think, I think we met once, maybe yeah. twice. One, no, we've met twice, but you were busy on the set working Louis. That's what but, I think uh, it was. Yeah, it had no, to no, be we then, right? Also remember the... Um, the uh oh gosh the planetarium project i think didn't you work on the planetarium project i don't I think, think i did no no it wasn't that it was the um uh, oh gosh well we met we met before was I it, think, was it, did we meet before oh, uh the military stuff the the louis and the 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 um oh what no. do you call it? the potty time and it. all that yeah i think it was the, the military stuff because I never worked Sesame until that until Louis's dad. So it was that time. That's oh, when it was. Yeah, yeah. I think that's when probably it was. How are you? Good? Yeah, doing great. Nice doing to see you again. Hey, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Main reason why we called you on is so that you would play something on the piano. Yeah. Because we're not interested in the illustration as much as you <laughs> 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 uh, hey, musician as well. Wow. You've been at Sesame what? How long now? Well, I started freelancing back in 1992, so it's approaching 30 years. I they asked me to wow. come on full time in 2000. So, right. So a couple of Fridays ago was my 20th anniversary, but I actually wow. started in 92. Happy anniversary! Wow, thank you. That's a good place yeah, to not have one day work. It's a good place. Oh, re no kidding! Wow. Not one day. Not one. I mean, the most difficult day I had was just a dream. Because I made it, I wanted this so much, and there were so many naysayers, but yeah, you know, they were all wrong. Right? Do you know why I think you like coming into work? Because this is your office. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was for ten years. It was, but uh, okay. This is a huge Cookie Monster. Tell us what what is it about Cookie Monster you love so much? Man, he is the greatest. It's not just the Muppets. He's the greatest of all characters anyway. He's, he's one of my best friends. And it's because he would give away his last cookie. If, if he had one cookie left and right. somebody came by and they wanted, they, they wanted half of it, he, he would actually say, no, no, it's okay. You can have the whole cookie. Me okay, me okay with that somehow. And there have been so many times on the show when, you know, they ran, ran out of cookies or there were no cookies to be found. And he yeah. finally found one. And, you know, he gave it away. There was a character named Lulu. You know that song? You probably heard it. Sometimes me think, what is friend? And he starts going about what yeah. a friend The last line is, maybe maybe friend is someone you give up last cookie for. And he gives her the cookie. Oh. And he says, oh, no, cookie must. Let's break it in half. No, no, no. You have it. I love him. He has so a that, big heart. It, no, it's not just that, but it proves you could be so passionate about something Hmm. But still, not be a jerk about it. Now, you know, some people they're passionate; they'll jump over their mom to get the. But him, as you know, what it is, he wants his friends to get the same feeling he has 
when he because eating cookies is the greatest thing in the world. So he'll right. give away his last cookie. So he thinks his friends are going to feel as good as he does. Nobody hmm. could, but even if it's a possibility, he wants them to have it. So yeah, right, right. So that's it. Do you do you do you re, do you relate to that through your work? Do you feel like part of what you're giving out in a way is the experience that you have by being a part of this world that you've been in? That you're able to kind of give is that a kind of fair thing to say? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much why I want to grow when I grow up, which I never will. I want to be a cookie monster. Um, right. I do a lot of uh, gift portraits and things like that, and I love to do it. I mean, I do it for so many different people. And um, I just give them away. I don't, I don't, I mean, every now and then people will actually hire me or commission me to do something. Yeah. But most of it is just gifts for people that I really love and I just want them to have their own cookie. So I just give it to them. <laughs> uh, somebody, somebody drew this for me. Hey, look at that. Wow. <laughs> do you remember yeah. this? Yeah, I sure do, man. <laughs> okay. This was 2012. I remember just, I had it in my old studio, I had a, a doodle wall with doodles from all my artist friends. And I just asked you if you would do something quick and this, you gave me this great, great drawing. Uh, well, there you go. Me. We're talking about it. There's the gift. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. and get, did you notice that he's wearing blue? Speaking of Cookie Monster. Yes, yes. <laughs> but so, so, but when, oh, there you go. There he is. He's everywhere. <laughs> But where so when when you started with Sesame, where did you start? I'm just for people who don't know and aren't familiar. Where, what, how did you come into Sesame? What was your role? Uh, it was character artist, right. and uh, you know, I remember Jim Mann, my my guru, my best one of my best friends. You know, he's a sweet man. He was the uh, art director, and he saw my work and he hired me and he gave me. I remember I was trying so hard to get into Sesame Street. I want to work for Jim Henson, but maybe even on Sesame Street. So anyhow, right. um, I'll tell that, maybe I'll tell that story later on, how they were the naysayers back then. But um, you, know, you can tell now if you like. Yeah, you can, start, you, go ahead. We have no word. I okay, would love to sure. hear it. I'm curious to hear it, yeah. Um, let's see. Where do I begin? So when, when you I had a teacher. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Know. You go ahead. Yeah, when you – so this is about – when you say naysayers, you mean people that thought – who kind of said, you know what? following your dreams is not always the best thing. You need to be a more kind of like, you should go more in this direction. It's more stable. No, no, that you're, kind no, of thing. You're, you're being way too kind. People say you're wasting your time. You're never going to get that job. You're never going to be able to do this. You're never going to, but my mom, who I, mm. I, I, I consider I have a, I have a tribe of people. My mom was not the queen. She's the king of my tribe. She was the <laughs> big ferocious voice that would always say, don't pay attention to anybody. Just keep going. She had to deal with it herself, you know, Right, but uh, the whole thing is that I, you know, I was on uh, watching Ed Sullivan when I was a kid, you know, and Muppets were always on Ed Sullivan. So one day, um, and whenever Jim Henson came out, to, you know, after the after the performance, he would shake Ed Sullivan's hand. Right, and I, you know, but I didn't care about that. I was like six years. I didn't care what that guy was. You know, I wanted to see the puppets. But then one day he came out, and he still had Kermit. I mean, back in the Kermit wasn't a frog yet, but he had Kermit right. in his hand. And man, something, I remember, I can still feel it now, something snapped in my head. So you mean a man was doing that? I, I couldn't believe it that some guy, because you know, I wasn't thinking about how they did it. I just loved seeing it. Right. So that was it. After that, I went on this trajectory that just never stopped. That thing, that, it's still there. It's somewhere hmm. back there. It's there. And um, yeah, so I just kept moving. And, and, and one day I said, you know what? They use, I mean, I, Jim Henson was like, one of the most generous artists of all time because he even before Sesame Street became really popular, he was he did the Muppets on Puppets, giving away and telling all of his secrets. Right. And I, I was like salivating over this this guy's work. He was like so generous. So I said, I gotta be part of this summer. But later on I said I was in college. I said, you know, maybe I could work for Jim Henson, maybe even on Sesame Street, because I loved it. You know, I remember watching the very first episode, not knowing what it was, but seeing that claymation and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so great. Uh -huh. um, then I saw the puppets. I said, "Those puppets look kind of like the ones that are on the Ed Sullivan show. I wonder if it's the same guy." And sure enough. Oh <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah. I just kept following it. You know, uh, Jimmy Jimmy Dean show with Ralph and stuff like that. Right. Then yeah, I said, "I want to see like this." So I went and I spoke to a teacher of mine who I, who I thought was like my hero because he loved 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 my work and he was always encouraging. So I said, "Maybe if I tell him, he can help me figure out how to at least try." Yeah, and as soon as I showed him, oh Lewis, I mean, I told him that you know, he said, Lewis, you're really, you're really good, but it says to me, you're aiming way too high, man. You had to aim lower, where where you can actually achieve these goals. But it says to me, come on, man. Oh, you know, man. you know. And my father's basically in the same place. 
But guess what mom said? This is what mom said. When I, I was moping around the house, mom made my, my childhood a wonderland. So she uh, she saw me moping around. She was not going to put up with that. So what's the matter with you? Why are you moping around? And, so, and I told her everything. I said, well, mom, you know that man that does those puppets on, on the show? Well, you know, I really wanted to work for him. My teacher said, I'm never going to get the job. So I guess I'm going to forget about it. She says, yeah. let, me, let, me, let me ask you something. Does he work for them? I said, well, no. I said, why are you listening to him? He doesn't even know. <laughs> you if they're gonna If they don't want to, let them tell you. Now, it made sense, but it still took a long time for me to finally get around to showing the work. And I will never forget. I have to say her name, Jennifer Lupinacci. She was the receptionist. A nice Italian right. girl. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, good. There you go. She was the saving grace there because it took me eight months. I mean, at first it was every month for the first four months. Then I said, well, I got to get in. So I kept going, kept going. The eighth month, I was getting really um, de- de- kind of depressed about it. I said, maybe that teacher was right. And maybe my dad was right. I said, all right, I'm going to bring it one more time. I'm going to leave it there. And if I don't get some kind of positive response this time, they were right. And I quit. Mm. I left it there and went back home. By the time I got home, there was already a call on my answering machine. Answering, Remember the answering machines? It was yeah. a call on my answering machine from Jim Mayen. And he said, you know, I really like your work very much. I'd like to get you started on a project. If you come back, we'll talk about it. And I, I, I don't know how many times. I think I wore out the tape. <laughs> I I kept, I said, this, this, can this be real? So I called him back and we made an appointment. And I was the whole time going there saying, this can't be. I, I, I must have dreamed this. So I mean, that's, that's how much it meant to me. I get there, the sweet guy, nice looking guy, very relaxed, very calm. And he looked at my drawings because he loved, he loved my, I drew Bert and Ernie. I drew Cookie Mouth, of course. And mm-hmm. I drew, I think, Kermit and Piggy. I think I did. But anyway, uh, he he saw the work and said, you know, I, I like what you're trying to do here. Said, trying to do? What are you trying to do? He says, you know, there are there are some basic uh, fundamentals of just drawing the characters. Mm-hmm. He took a piece of tracer paper, put it over my drawings that I thought were so great, and he started showing me how the cool. anatomy of the Muppets and how the construction theories that they use at the, at the uh, workshop are actually mm-hmm. applied in the drawings. Right. And I, just that one day was this beautiful education. So anyhow, he said, but I want to, you know, I'm going to get you started. I'm going to give you a project and then I'll, I'll do the same thing to your new drawing. I'll take a piece of tracing paper and blue line it for you and you can make the corrections. I, 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 the thing is, he, he was talking, it was almost like the, the Charlie Brown's like, wah, 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 because he was, <laughs> he was hiring me. He was in the process of giving me a job for Sesame Street. And wow. it, was to draw, it was to draw Ernie, a little Ernie head that was going to be inside of a little kid sneaker. But it was the uh-huh. biggest job in the whole wow. world, and that was my yeah. first. Yeah. So, and yeah. so anyhow, that, that was the whole trajectory. I was, you know, was getting to the right person, not yep. giving up. That's the thing. I just wouldn't give up. I mean, I was about to. Maybe yeah. I would. I don't know. I felt like I was because I was getting heartbroken by this rejection. I, I, I rejection. can relate. They said nice things. They left me nice notes. And Michael yeah. Frist saw the work and said, no, very nice work, but we have nothing right now. Right. So, Okay, well, maybe I'll keep and finally got to Jamea and he, he gave me my first job and it just kept going. And then um, at a certain point, I became like the top um, licensing artist. This, they were bidding for, the companies were bidding for me to be their exclusive artist. So this company called Romar International, they won the bid. I didn't know this was going on, by the way. Wow. When I go up, I go up to hand in some work and they say, oh, by the way, Lewis, there's a company called Romar International. They want to you to be their exclusive artist. And at first I said, well, I don't want to just do their work. I want to, I'll, but then I found out there was this gigantic, vast array of different things from the lunchboxes to, to uh, all kind of posters and bedding. And it was huge. Right, so wow. I said, okay, I guess I'll be all right. <laughs> and then um, I started working for MTV Animation and I wasn't able to do as much work for Sesame as I, I, I didn't want to let go of it, but I really had to do this other work. And then I worked for yeah. this company. I was the entire art department. And and um and I really could I really did very limited work you know God bless Kevin Clash he would he would hire me every now and then to do storyboards for him so I don't Kevin, him. Well, Kevin Clash don't know him not familiar I don't like him <laughs> okay I do not like the man <laughs> look I can't even joke I love that man and he, <laughs> my my brother but anyway but what did but what did he do that was so incredible tell us again he gave me he gave me uh, he hired me to do storyboards there was something he was doing so it was oh storyboard. It was an almost storyboard that he needed. So I did it as a full code piece. I can't remember what it was for, but I remember just grateful that I could still do Sesame work while I was doing all this other work. 
Right. And then when I was working at, at MTV, um, they it was great, but at a certain point, they started kind of asking a little too much of me. I mean, I was doing a lot, I was a lot of character. It wasn't character design per se. I did some character design, but it was character finishing. I would ink the characters in. It was for a, ca- a show called Daria. And it did a lot of, a lot of that work. I just, Sorry, you, you just broke. Oh, there we go. Okay, I was going to say, hey. bro- can you can you say what it is again? Because you broke up when you yeah, said okay. the title. So uh, it was a just show what's called, it called Daria. 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 Right. Yep. Yeah. And um, so I, I did a lot of inking that you see. It looks like I might have inked all of that too. All but right. again, you have, to, you have to stay within the style. So yeah. um, I, it wasn't right. using my own style at all. I was sure, sure. Following, yeah. <clears throat> but, so, and then, and, but at a certain point, they were asking a little too much of me. And it was kind of in the contract, I guess. But I, was, I had to do a lot more work but not get paid any additional funds for it. And I said, you know, this isn't right. Let me see if I can go ahead and go back and, and um, get more freelance from Sesame Street because I love that work and there was so much of it. Right. When I called, they told me they had been looking for me for three months. And they said, they, we, we can give you freelance, but if you want a full-time job, we have yeah. it for you. Wow. Are you kidding me? So I said, okay. So I went up, yeah, I, met, I met with everybody, and that was that was pretty much it. And so then, and so you had to deal then well, again almost, with Kevin. You had to deal well, with Kevin years Clash. Later, over twenty years later, was that? I say then. So then you had to go back and deal with Kevin Clash again. <laughs> yeah, I did uh, for me. I you know I met Kevin in uh, nineteen ninety one, and yeah, I just I don't know. We just I thought we were going to get along, but he just was not the nicest guy to me, you know. Mm-hmm. And then we had to do Elmo and his dad, and I thought. Oh God! I got to do it with Kevin again, and yeah, you know, I, I don't I know why you why you like him so much. I, I mentioned earlier in the show that Kevin introduced me to the producer at Sesame Street. What I didn't mention was that he charged me about three thousand dollars, which is crazy, course. which is unbelievable. Yeah. Did he ever charge you for anything, guys? You know what? I'm not jumping on his bandwagon. <laughs> that's that's my buddy. I don't. I don't. Hey, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do, huh? Holy smoke! I was not expecting that. And you know, and Gene, Gene, you're wrong. It was actually five thousand. <laughs> That's right. But I had to do the other two thousand just yeah. in chores. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Lewis, look who it is. <laughs> yeah. Who's that? Right What's on. up, Mister Mister? Uh, how are you, bro? Long you know time no see. Yeah, I know, man. You're looking good. You're looking good. It's, it's so funny you you talking about Cookie Monster. You know. It, it's not funny. I mean, it is it, it, it is funny because you're always talking about Cookie Monster, but that's that's. Uh, I, I was just I was remembering. I, were you around when uh, when Frank came in? He had done Sesame in a long, long, long time, and John Stone was still alive. And John was directing all these inserts, and um, Frank did Cookie Monster, Bert, Grover, you know, and in every insert, I don't even know if I told. Gene and Bill is every insert that he did, he put John's name in it somewhere. Oh, really? John Stone's name. So, you know, it got to the point where everybody was like waiting for it. (laughs) And he would, it was the funniest thing. And so, you know, Cookie was talking about those, you know, put this cookie here and cookie there. And you know, this this one's name is John. You know, (laughs) know, anything. And he did this, even with Grover, Grover was doing something with Fat Blue. And yeah. I think they was doing like a spoof on, um, I think it was Spider-Man the musical or something like that. And uh, there was a lighting guy. Hey, John, John, move the light on. <laughs> it's like everything. <laughs> it was the funniest day. Oh, and so much, and John was like breaking up like crazy, watching, <laughs> watching. And everybody was in anticipation as far as how Frank was going to get. Right, like, this right. is Johnny. John. You know, it's like, it was hysterical. <laughs> hey, what, yeah. what um, I want to ask. You guys actually, when you're when you're storyboarding, someone's directing and somebody else is storyboarding. How do you how did you guys find working together as far as what was what was your process? Because I know there's different processes, right, for people. Well, it was great because uh, you know we would just, I think, we would get together, wouldn't we? We would get yeah, together right. and do it. I would go to your office and we would just get together and do it, and I would give you you know all of the the direction that I wanted to go with, with it. But I mean, he did a, you know, he did a lot of, Lewis did a lot of storyboards for me. I I, you know, you me. did you, and also a lot of, and I, I told, I think I've talked to you about that, Bill, about, you know, we were doing all those military family uh, uh, 
home videos and he did all the storyboards. I, I directed a lot of those and he do right. full storyboards of the whole man, the whole, the whole uh, home video. But, but, but what was it like Lewis having to work with him? Oh, it was, it was great because we ate oh. like Kings. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's to, true. Trying right? to disappoint you, but we ate like Kings. I mean, like, <laughs> The menu you, know that, the you, know, you know me, that always had to be food involved. <laughs> always had to be food involved. So go ahead. So yes, but, uh, you ate like king, but it was a good process. Yeah, no, and, and the thing is, I mean, I, it was actually an education for me because uh, to understand direction and things like that, I mean, it was very serious. I'm much, it's much fun. He's like a big kid. When it came mm -hmm. down to, to that work, man, it was like, man, razor sharp focus and trying to figure out the, the angle and everything, which camera's going to do what. It was such, it was going to school. Right. But um, uh, but I didn't, even while, know. I, I didn't even but know that that you had did storyboards freelancing. I didn't know. Oh, that. Yeah, I, I, I forgot that because I always thought that you know that you was always there at Sesame. So I, I didn't. I, I forgot <laughs> the time at the beginning when you weren't really around. You were just freelancing. I I, I was surprised. I forgot about that. Really. Yeah, I did a ton of stuff, man. Can I ask but, you some uh, of those? Yeah. You brought you brought up the um because I think a lot of people would love to know this. It's really interesting. Uh, and I had I learned this from Michael Frith, and I don't remember when or where, but it was some conversation that we had had years ago. But he was talking about how when he designs something, he builds into ah. you know the 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 posture, the how the hand is kind of in. Can you talk a little bit about that when when designing things? Absolutely, and I I have to start with Jane Henson because mm. when I, I I direct all the photo shoots as well. It's one of the things mm. that. I do. And but my very first one, I was in the carriage house that she owned that um, we used to do with John Barrett, photographer John Barrett, mm. the guy that Jim mentioned, handpicked. But um, so I was doing this, and I was posing Grover, but I had such a hard time. I, actually, it wasn't my first time, but it was a long. It was my first time with Grover, right. and something just didn't feel right. And I'm looking at him, and it, it was a funny pose that I had him backwards on his horse, and he's trying to figure out where they're going. But it didn't look right. So, uh, and Jane, because uh, if I was there on the Tuesday, she was always down there, you know, milling around because that's the day she was in there. All but right. she wow. sat down and she was just watching. And I said, God, I was like nervous. Freaking Jane Hinton. It's almost like having Jim Hinton here. <laughs> so, I, so I said, Jane, is everything okay? I said, oh, no, no, I love to watch you work. And that meant so much to me. Yeah. But I said, but I'm, I'm kind of having trouble here. She says, it's like this. She came up. She did one crank to Grover and lean him forward. It said, this is all that was missing. And it, that that impacted every other photo shoot after that. And that was years and years ago. So I'm glad she saw that and did that for me. Right. And it's, it's you know, and, and, um, because Jim Henson and Frank Oz, they all spoke about that 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 posture. I mean, like that, here's a, here's the that, angle. That leaning Sampling. forward. The angle Sampling while performing, something. right? Hey, that was a fun <laughs> photo shoot. <laughs> that took seven hours to build, man, but I didn't feel one second of it. It's in fact, when it was over, I said, is that it? I want more. I said, Lewis, we've been here for seven hours, man. Wow. So about, then, can, can you talk about eye lines? I mean, maybe except for mm. Cookie, although I'm sure Cookie has an eye line too. But <laughs> <laughs> can you talk about eye lines when you're having to line all this up? Oh, my gosh. The one part of the whole job that takes the longest Again, because John has this razor sharp look, this this vision, because he's been doing it forever. So, um, all right, now we have this we have this language that we could use anywhere in the world. If we're doing a photo shoot, we say front door and back door instead of left and right, because wherever you are, left and right means different things. So we say hmm. front door and back door. And um, so, is that camera right or your or the character's no, no. right? In, in the carriage house, the the front door was on the right, and I the see. back door was on the left. Got but it. you can't stay left and right. You have to get no matter where you stood in the studio, the front door was always over there. And the back door, so that's it. Sorry, turn his head just a little bit to the back door, uh, a little front door up, down, and then we had to just keep doing it until it finally they were finally looking at. Now, the thing is, whenever and we had other people that that chimed in, and I said, No, a guy named Mark Magno, another gifted artist, really, really great guy. Yeah, Mark, and yeah. he, yeah, Mark, he was like another consummate professional, both creative and technical uh, combined. But yeah. he would see it one way, and then John would see it another way. And after a while, I said, look, I have to make this decision. Only John Barrett gets to pick what the eye focus is. And to me, he was always right. Although he and Mark would always argue. But I said, okay, I'm the final word on this. We're doing it John's way. <laughs> but, yeah, so. yeah, it's very specific. I mean, and it's even harder, right, Kevin, when we're doing live 
when, when we're in there as opposed to posing, trying to get, you know, six or seven or 10 different people looking in the same place, you know, uh, without it, without it being connected to the monitor as, as, as technology went on, we could get the photographer to kind of, you know, plug into our monitors. So we, so we're all looking kind right, of in the right. same place, but before that, forget about what a nightmare. Forget crazy. about it. Yeah. Crazy. It, was, it was always crazy. Here's an interesting question. Um, I don't know if it applies directly, but do you have to redesign a puppet when its performer changes to match their height, hand size, whatever? Uh, out some, some, some. I know that with, uh, and, and you know, probably Lewis knows this. I mean, Matt Vogel, who performs Big Bird now, he his, his the inside of Big Bird had to be redesigned a little bit for his hand instead of because because his hand is different from Carol Spinney's. So no, that's definitely, um, as far as, uh, I would say somebody like Ernie or, or Bird and everything. No. And same thing with Elmo. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty simple mouth. So, um, but sometimes, the, sometimes, sometimes the, the thumb, you know, the, the, the where, where, if there's a, a, a little, you know, little, little circle that your thumb goes in or something like that, it might need to be moved for the, uh, another puppeteer that's, that's uh, performing the character. Here's just, not, here's just not so much the exterior, right? No, Maybe a, a exterior like, doesn't change. But inside, I mean, I know with Rolf and Dr. Teeth and the chef that my, my thumb is more comfortable just over a bit, you know, instead of flat and straight out. And it was just moving that sort of thing over sometimes putting a little bit of foam brain mm -hmm. to to have some pressure, you know, to have something to work against. You know, like Dr. Teeth, I had a big gap because Jim had a bigger, longer hand than mine. Yeah, so I, ne I Jim, needed yeah. to fill that gap. Otherwise, wow. he would just kind of wobble there and I didn't have real control, you know. Uh, but, but with Kermit again, too. Sometimes, like when we have somebody, right, when we have somebody uh, um, uh, double, like Kermit needs to be, you know, he's not running, let's say, I don't know, uh, another character that, that a puppeteer needs to do that also does Kermit. If that other character is driving the scene, someone needs to do Kermit. So we have to find a way to make it fill out and still look like Kermit, right? The most malleable kind of character um, without making him look squashed or flattened. Or, sure. You know. I think, you know, when I when I got to perform all the, all the Frank's characters for um, Mother's Treasure Island, there was no... I never had any. I didn't have any problems with him. I think my hand is pretty much the same you as Frank's, were, right. so I didn't really need to. And uh, Piggy, right? You Piggy did a lot of really, Piggy. Yeah, so it was, it, I, there was nothing that needed to change in there. One thing I wanted to talk about with Lewis, I used to be, I used to love going into his office and watching him blue line, you know, stuff that needed to be changed. <laughs> it was so funny because sometimes, do you see this? Look what they did. Did they not understand? What? what, they, <laughs> what I mean, are you kidding me? It, 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 I mean, it all it took was another little simple. <laughs> he, would, he just couldn't believe sometimes how somebody got it so wrong. Right. <laughs> you know what it is? I love them, and you can't mess with these little guys. They're, they're not. <laughs> I don't, they're not characters or properties or puppies. These are my friends. You don't insult them like that. Right. right. <laughs> Lewis, well, I mean, uh, but that's what you're there for. You're there to, to get it, you know, get make sure that they get it right. So, absolutely. Just a quick follow up on that the um, the posing. Uh, I don't know if it's Henri or Henry. Henry uh, wants to Henry. know if uh, with a with a character like Big Bird who's so large, does someone have to be inside of him, or do you still have some kind of structure for Big Bird? Whenever I do a shoot and we have his legs visible. I usually have to have somebody there. Now, um, if he's sitting down, I might they might be able to do some kind of a structure because inside of them, is they're all um, armature wire. Big Bird has his own special rig. And if you're only seeing him from like the like the lower waist up, that he's on the rig. And I have to actually, well, I consider it a performance. So even though my hand's not inside the puppet, I, um, I am performing because I have to pose them according to their personalities and according to what they do, what they wouldn't do. All that yeah. stuff. So I have to be all of them because it really is. I mean, I, I, Laura McLean, you know, Laura, she's like the, the, my. Oh. I just love her. I mean, you Beautiful took her from lady. me one time, Kevin, because you, the work you were doing, you took her from me for a little while, but she's back. Well, now. I told her, I told her at some point she could meet Barry Manilow. So anytime you say that, you can get her, you know, she's. <laughs> you know, now I know. Now, but you can actually do it. I'm not sure. <laughs> can I bring up a question? Yeah. From, from, did, I, did I answer the one about Big Bird? Was that okay? 
Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yes. If yeah, you yeah, want, yeah. I, I mean, I thought it felt like, I mean, I, I think we. Well, no, yo, let me, let me just finish that up. So sure, um, sure. like you showed that Google thing that I, that I did. Yeah. Um, Peter Linz is inside of Big Bird for that one because oh, his right, life is right. joined. And we also needed some um, Big Bird to hold the L in Google. Uh, so, right. <laughs> yeah, so right. Peter's in there. And, uh, Peter, whenever Peter go, I did I did the 50th anniversary photo shoot, and he was in there too, but we had to do some video footage too. He was still inside of the of the photo muppet because it's a specific photo muppet for Big Bird. It's not the right. performance camera. But he's right. in there dancing and doing this stuff, and you would not know it because it's yeah. like the, beast, the beast's not moving, but his body's moving in such a way that he looks wow. perfect like Big Bird. Wow. So yeah, of the, if there are no legs showing, then I can just go ahead and use the rig. And, and like ninety percent of the time, or maybe more, it's the rig. On right. Big Bird. So here's a question from American Autistic Lewis: uh, Could you tell us more about Julia? How she came to Sesame Street? I have autism myself. My girl Julia, yeah. Uh, the thing, a friend of mine, a, a, a woman named Rachel, well, now it's Rachel Carter, but Rachel London, she saw in me how much I love kids, and she said, you know, Lewis, you'd probably be good to, to volunteer at the school I work in for kids on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't have any training. I wouldn't want to disrupt their, their progress. I said, no, no, you just have to go love them. I, said, I can do that. So I got to work with the kids and fell in love with all of them, but there were a couple that I actually got to work with directly. And the thing is, I did not know Sesame was working on the autism initiative, but be, I had that experience. And they didn't know that I was volunteering because I was on my own time. Right. So when they came to me, they said, no, look, we're working on this character and we, we want to um, start this, this initiative. It's not going to be a puppet. It's just going to be in a book. And, and right away, I said, well, this is wonderful. Now I know why I did all that volunteer work. It's like this beautiful coming together yeah. of the fate, you know? Huh. Didn't our friend, our friend Leslie Kimmelman, didn't she begin the whole process yes, here? She, she did. So we, we kind of consider ourselves mom and dad to Julia. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, she, she's a wonderful, wonderful person. Wow. Man. And whenever I had a question, or she had, even when she was asking certain questions, she would come to me and we'd talk about Julia. Because in the formative time, you know, we, I mean, you know, you really have to be sensitive. This is a very, very sensitive issue. And, right. you know, sensitive is never afraid to tackle the things that, that need specific attention. So anyhow, yeah. um, they came to me with that and they said at first, no, she's not going to be a puppet. She's just going to be in a book. And I felt good about that because when you talk about the behaviors that some certain people on the spectrum have, you know, you, there's no way to represent all of the different ones because everyone's unique. Like everybody, everybody's unique. So I said, that's great because when they talk about Julia's uh, behaviors, then anybody can interpret that however they need to. Hmm. But yeah. she was such a success that um, they decided, um, the executive creative director at the time, she said, you know what, we have to put her on the show as a puppet. I said, no, 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 we can't do that. There's no way to represent the whole spectrum with one character. And then I was told by someone else that wasn't, that, but anyhow, they said, you know, Lewis, we're not going to represent the spectrum. We're going to point to it. We're going to bring attention to it on Sesame Street. Now that I can get behind. So I went, I ran, I did the sketches, the model turns of Julia. And brought them to Henson, and then Raleigh Cruson. Oh, Raleigh Cruson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Jay, and Jason Weber, you know, died the way. Yeah. Man, it's like it was like this beautiful coming together. But I got to tell the Jim Henson people what I wanted them to do, which was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Your project <laughs> wife. Your project yeah, wife yeah. is saying hello. Hey. You see that? Hey, look at that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, let me show them. Let me show the people this here while we're on the subject. Oh yeah, Here's a little breakdown of the whole uh, design. Yeah, yeah. What can you tell us about this? Well, all right, just to go back a little bit with Julia, because it was a bit of a challenge. Because um, I knew that because she was not going to respond to the camera or to her fellow, you know, characters. I said I need to do something with her that's going to make her instantly relatable. So um, I said, I want to give her human texture hair, even if it's a, a, a color, which, you know, there are people with hair color like that. But, um, but if it's a human texture, as soon as you see her, you have a, there's a warmth about her and you can immediately relate to her. And there was a bit of pushback because, no, 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 she's a Muppet. We want to keep her in the Muppet world so that she doesn't look like something different. You know? I said, well, you know what? She is different. We've got to do something because, again, she's not going to, you know, like the, the show opens up whether it's Elmo or Cookie or, or maybe, um, you know, Gibby Gordon. They said, oh, hi, welcome to Sesame Street. She was not going to do that. And I said, no, mm -hmm. I want people to fall in love with her as soon as they see her. The human texture here was going to make her look like a little girl. Right, like a right. girl. 
and it, it would click. And there was pushback, but eventually, you know, you can see the um, the photo with the with the rod next to her. I, I got to they they after a while understood what I meant, and I, they were able to proceed with the actual teeny texture hair. And again, it was a total success. The, her first episode, where she was first introduced, even though Big Bird didn't think that that she liked him, yeah. Alan was there to actually you know mend that and make it make it work. And again, because of that human texture hair, you felt like you were, you knew it was a muppet. But you felt like you were looking at a little girl. Yeah, yeah. All right. And nice. then they asked me to design the family, and that was great too. And it, it, there's, a, there's another story about about that too. But I didn't design the doggy doll. The doggy that the Henson oh, called right. that Rose. <laughs> and then of course Leslie Carrara Rudolph took took her on and made her come to life beautifully, like she does. Right. Abby, and you know, there's um there's so many different things that you're a part of. It says me, I and mean, we haven't even talked about the parades or. And it's oh, like, yeah. I, I feel like we're oh. dragging. I, 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 if you're okay to stay for a little bit more, can you talk just a little bit longer? Yeah, of course, I mean, man. We're running, we're running you, you, you brought Kevin, and that was your magic wand, right? That's your ace. You, put we, health, <laughs> you, want. I, you know what? All right, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're, you're wonderful. Yeah, you're Kevin, don't you have something to do? <laughs> Bill Beretta. Bill Beretta. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. He has to go to Costco. Look, he's already complaining. Go to Costco. He's complaining. <laughs> Um, but can we talk about the parades a little bit? Well, yeah, one thing sure. that one thing that I didn't tell you about, but what, um, they they you know sometimes they design new floats, mm. and uh, Lewis got to do some amazing redesigning of the floats. I mean that I think that's isn't that one of yours or isn't that one of yours? Yeah, yeah. that's one of your designs. Uh, did you do you did? But you did the one where it was books. And pencils yeah. and crayons. He did one exactly. that was wonderful. That was all books and crayons and pencils and stuff like that. And of the of the of one two three sets for you, and that was a gorgeous. One. How many have he done, Lewis? How many floats? I, don't, I think they only had about two floats. What Kevin's talking only. about only <laughs> a, a, a basic float that they repainted. So I had to I had to design the repaint. Right. Well, so oh, right. The, but then but you I, do the these guy right. Yeah, that was um, the great thing about this is that uh, it was such a great uh, opportunity because it was uh, my first, well, not my second balloon, but it was the first balloon they said that had the most coverage of any balloon in the history of the parade. And it's only because the marching band behind it was late. So they had to shoot from that <laughs> angle. And I'm so grateful because I, you know, I don't think you have any other shots of it, but I drew it from every angle, from uh, from below, from above, showing the undulation of the cape. And I'm glad uh, I did all that. Wow. Normally the cape would just be flat, but nice. I did as they built it in, and um, the camera saw every angle of, of this particular. And oh, the thing cool. is that is that that center image is that like a little maquette, a clay maquette, or something? Yeah. It's a, it's a maquette. It's a small version of it, which actually make a fiberglass casting of it, and then they have to use that to to do the um the balloon patterning. But wow. um, but again, you know, when they do the balloons, they have to think about flight and all the stuff that they explain to me. So like when it, the first one, it was Big Bird, and he looked more like Tweety Bird because his head was big and his body was small. <laughs> no, 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 you can't do that. And so we understand the dynamics of flight. I don't care about that. This is Big Bird. Right. So I went and I resculpted it, and they said, Lewis, that won't fly because. The series of cables in his head is what makes that shape. So we, I said, well, so we kept going back and forth till we finally found a nice, a nice uh, medium. Wow. And the same, you know, same for Grover. And can um, I, yeah, I, I, can I ask you a question? I, I, a, a little birdie told me a little story about a special event that may have happened at a th Thanksgiving Macy's parade for you years ago. Were you, so, were you sober when a birdie was talking to you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, go on, go on. I'm sorry. I, I don't know, and, and and Elmo was a part of it too. Something happened with you. Uh, oh God, man! You know about <laughs> Do you okay. want to talk? We don't. We don't have to bring it up. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hinting at it. It's up to you. <laughs> it's fine. Well, it, yeah, it still was. A, it still was a sweet moment. I think it's time. amazing. You know it's, it's a fun, fun memory of mine. The marriage didn't work, but certainly the the wedding did because um, we got met. Uh, Judge Judy, done, yeah. Go ahead, Judge, Judge, Judge Judy, Lewis, she married you guys. Go ahead. Yes, you officiant. Judge Judy's officiant. The Michael Feinstein sang to us. I don't think and, people are getting it yet. I don't think people realize what happened. Okay, start at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> Macy, all the work I did so much. They said, Lewis, we get about 
60,000 requests for people to get married at the parade. And we have to say no every time, but we want to give that as a gift to you because we love it. I said, are you kidding me? So th this, this is how this just panned out. They, they, um, I said, all right, let me ask, let me talk to my fiance. So I called her and said, look, they want to give us a gift of a wedding at the parade. So well, we're going to have our wedding. So I, well, I guess we could have two. So, <laughs> so you know, okay, it sounds kind of weird, but okay. So I called back and said, yeah, thank you very much. We'll take it. And so, by the way, Judge Judy wants to be an efficient. I said, yes, Judy. <laughs> and I said, I, I, I just, all right. So I called her back. I said, no, no, no. She's gonna, she's gonna yell at you. She's gonna, I said, no, she's not gonna do that. <laughs> so, Why do you deserve her? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So then, I said, all right. So we agree. So right, that'd be nice. So I call back. Yeah, Judge Judy, that's that sounds wonderful. Oh, by the way, Michael Feinstein wants to sing to you. I said, oh, come on, guys, what are you doing to me? <laughs> I, I call her back and I said, Michael Fines. I said, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. I said, Okay. So I called back, Yeah, Michael Fines would be wonderful. And then they said, Oh, by the way, Access Hollywood wants to put it on the air. I said, Holy Oh, shit. my God. Oh, I, I said, wish there was you, you guys are killing me. So, anyhow, um, I call her back and we agree. And we call her back and say, All right, yeah, now is this it? Please don't say anything else. They said, No, no, that's it. That we have everything we need now. Okay, thank you. So then, um, Kevin comes walking into my office and I say, Kevin, you're not going to believe this. Macy's wants to give us a parade, Judge Judy, Michael Feinstein, Access Hollywood. And you know what he says? Can Elmo be your best man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the thing is, Kevin was going to be my best man for the actual wedding. But right, right, then right. he had the idea. I said, well, how the hell is that? <laughs> so, but they built this box and this guy gets it. It's not that big. It couldn't be that big, you know. Tall, like what? What are you six one, six two, Kevin? Something like that. And he six, gets this small yeah. box, six. and they roll out this box, this big, beautiful green box with a bow on it. Almost sitting on top of it, he's the ring bearer, That's and so he bad. had the rings in his hand. And oh my god! We had the and Judge had Judy kept Judge. I kept I kept playing around with Elmo with 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 you guys, and Judge Judy kept saying, "Elmo, please shush! Elmo, shush! <laughs> shush, Elmo, shush!" Sure. What, what year was, is this? What year was uh, this? Do you remember what year? Because I couldn't remember what year it was. I think it was 2004. That's what I'd see. I thought it was like. And was it before the parade? After the yeah, parade? No, it was, right, before. right before. Right before. It was before right before. The parade. It was, it was I was actually. The, um, I was the actually. The opening show, I guess. Yeah, I was actually. Before. I was actually at the float, the Sesame Street float. And they took a golf cart, but you know, a golf oh. cart, and they, they grabbed me up. So I had, I literally had Elmo. The, the parade hadn't even started, and everybody's on the side. So I'm now I'm in this golf cart driving up the street with Elmo on my hand, and everybody's going crazy for me to get all the way over all the Macy's to, in front so I could get in this box and do this. So, it so I did not know that. I didn't know. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank you. So, <laughs> so Lewis, so Lewis, fine. was it was it on the air? Was it broadcast? No, no, no. But no, it wasn't before on the, the broadcast. But yeah, it was before the broadcast, and then yeah. they, they did all the things. Then they started the show. But then that night it was on Access Hollywood. Right, so it was but broadcast. Could you I have family there? Online. Was like, were the parent, were your family come? To, to, were they? Yeah, there some family came. Some family yeah. came. That wasn't all our people. You know, the crowd. People, a lot of my family don't like big crowds. Oh, right, right. So many you know people are there. Did any of Elmo's family come? Yeah. Okay. No. No. <laughs> No, I we just looked online them. to see if there was a clip, but there's nothing. No, the problem the problem was is that you know we, I was a, you know everybody was setting up on the float, you know they had to stay and get ready to start the, the parade. So you know I was the only one that could that ran you know that they, they took me up there and took me back so we could I, I mean, can't you know, get ready it. for the parade. That's I had so no great. idea, man. What but a it was, great it was, story! It was so much fun, and she was great. Judge Judy was great. Wow. Oh, was wait, 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 Kevin. You were what? in that box. You must have been in that box for like 15 or 20 minutes or more. No, it was I great. Believe you know what was <laughs> nice is the weather. The yeah, weather was really the weather was yeah. really good. It was, it was really because normally it could be like, you know, 10 degrees or five degrees on, you know, during the Macy's Thanksgiving. Day. But luckily it was a really kind of warm day. It was great. Yeah. It really worked and out. Nice. Hold on. Can I can I mention a few things, Lewis? I wanted to just mention a few things before we kind yeah. of have to to run. But by the I way, love you. I got to go to Costco. Wait, You're really going to go? All right, get out. No, no, I'm just playing. Go ahead. All right. Get out. Real quick. Send our love to your wife, Yvonne, after telling that story. We need to give some love to Yvonne. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Nice. Yeah. Very nice of you, man. That's yes. very high class. First class, bro. <laughs> um, but can you 
Can you talk about the Spirit Storm School? I'm really curious uh, yeah, about I, that. I can talk a little bit about that. Um, it, it, I, I launched it once, and it, it just wasn't ready to launch because people. I've been talking to people, coaching people, speaking here and there, kind of yeah. like this. And I've been asked a lot of I mean, I did one for Google last week. They, this is the second wow. time I did it for them because they really, really enjoy it. They wanted a master class in character design. So what do you guys, you guys are techies. What do you want? They turned out to be one of the best students. I had the greatest questions. It was, and it went on. They, they had to call the security guards to have them um, come and break it up. But when the security guards get there, they liked it too. They, <laughs> they sat down and joined in. But All the right. thing is, um, the school is really about what happens before you actually do your artwork? Now, what ha see what happened to me when I was, you know, younger, and that teacher told me I'd never get the job, and, mm. and things like that happened. But I listened to my mom, who said, "Don't pay attention to that; just keep going." So I, I said, "You know, there's a curriculum in that," and I started to formulate that. Even back when I was at MTV, I started these group, these sessions called the Tribe Sessions. Uh -huh. Then, when I got the session, I continued them. And Frank Oz was one of my guests, and he was magnificent. Oh wow! And I had Drew Struzan, the movie poster artist. He came by. Right. It was really, really successful. So I said, you know, this is real. I got to do this. So I wrote a curriculum and I, I registered it with the Department of Education. So uh, I just had to refine it. But finally, 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 I, I met the right people. And I should pretty probably, I was trying to launch it this year, but you know what happened. Um, right. So right. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's maybe next spring or maybe even next summer I can I can launch this whole thing. It, it really great. is about it's about helping people to. You know, you don't, you can't teach anybody how to be an artist, but you can release them into that truth that's already in there. And really, everybody's an artist. Your life is your work of art. And mm. the drawings and the paintings and the puppets and all that that comes out of that, those are the results of that artwork. Mm. So mm, I, yeah. it gets deep, so don't let me get started. No, I love it. I'm, I was just curious about it because it sounds like a wonderful thing. It's what a great idea and a great thing to, to pull out of people, you know, themselves into an artistic way. That's yeah, thank amazing. You. Yeah. Well, do we want to show more or do we need to? Well, let's do, can we do, why don't we do just real questions? quick. Well, yeah, well, what? We, we, why don't we uh, maybe spin the wheel, pick a number. Okay, well, <laughs> I've got, we've got a bunch of drawing, a bunch of pictures here from one to 23 or 24. Pick a number and we'll just pull it up and. Spin the, I'll spin you. the wheel. You say the number, Lewis, and I'll spin the wheel. We'll see what comes up. Okay, uh, spin it. Well, you gotta you gotta pick it over, and then it's all backwards. It makes no sense. Okay, nineteen. I'll just nineteen. Nineteen. Oh, uh, we did that list. That was your Cookie Monster oh, office. Pick again. I love Cookie Monster. I can't. It's in my blood. I'm telling you. Um, twelve. 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 Okay. Here we I, go. I have no reason for spinning it. Just something. That's I what like I mean. It. I'm trying to he help you out. Sounds, yeah, it makes no sense. What oh, is this all about? Again, oh, that's great. Monster. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, that's great. Man. The, the 45th anniversary of Sesame Street, was it 40 or 45th? I think it was 45th. 40th. Oh, 45th. 40? I think it's 45th. Oh, yeah, 45th. I could be wrong. Okay. For this one. Anyhow, they asked me to pose a lot of the characters that they got, uh, the actual Muppets, in the cases at the, at the Performing Arts Library in Lincoln Center. And then um, they said, you know what? Would you? They saw the chalk drawings I did at Sesame. And they said, hey, can you uh, do some of those for us? I said, well, it's going to be kind of weird if I do it with, with chalk. I said, and there, there's a, a, wom a woman, there, an artist, that said, no, you can use permanent chalk. I said, what the heck is that? And it's actually like paint markers. And I said, and it felt just like chalk. It was just, it went on like lipstick, but I could get the same effect. Wow. So, um, so that was uh, my, my, the crowning joy of my life was to draw that gigantic cookie monster. I did right. Rosita. I did... Um, but yeah, those are the, those are the regular chalk, those are street chalk. But, so this um, is yeah. oh wait, so I oh, this a separate project? Maybe I'm confused. Yeah. This is at Sesame, right? This is at the right. Office. This is what this is what they saw. The people at the library saw this and said, "Can you do this at the library for the 45th?" And I said, "Well, I can't do it with regular chalk." And they said, "Well, God. use the permanent chalk." Right. Yeah. Can, you, should, can you show the um, other ones while he's explaining? Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, did how many characters a, did you do at the office? Oh gosh, I did I did a gigantic Elmo. Then I did Big Bird. Then I did there you go. Yeah, there it is. I did look at that incredible then, texture in the fur and, and everything. And, and then Grover, I did Grover upside down over there because he <laughs> has to be, of course, you know, All gotta right. be loyal to the man. And did you spray them like a, with a finish and stuff? No, so they... and, and actually Kevin told me, you know, you need to be able to seal these. I said, Well, no, it, if they wanted that, I would have done it with paint. I didn't mm -hmm. know about the, the magic paint markers. Hey, here's the big bird. 
actually did a time lapse of this, which is pretty cool. Oh, really? Oh, that'd be cool yeah. to see. But um, yeah, and that, I, I showed Carol. I brought Carol was up in the office. And I said, Carol, you've got to come and see this. And he says, I, I did a drawing of Big Bear. Said, oh no, Louis, I've seen your drawing. Your drawings of Big Bear are beautiful. I said, no, no, you got to see this one. <laughs> that 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 Big Bear. I brought him up there. He he didn't know what to do. He gave, Aww. he grabbed me, hugged me, and gave me the biggest kiss on the cheek. Aww. He said, "This yeah. is beautiful." He called me Luis, the French pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't care. It was Carol Smitty, man. That's but, awesome. Uh, and it, that big bird was actually eight foot two, like the size of the actual bird. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Group. Yeah. Kevin, you want to pick a number? Uh, or, 26. Or Lewis? 26. What? It was up to 25. <laughs> oh, okay, 25. Oh. Uh, 24, sorry. Oh. You did oh. 25. 24. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh, man. See, which one is that? That was, I did so many schools. I'm trying to remember which school that was. Um, oh, that's oh hard to tell. I think the came, I think the kids came. Where did I go? You know what it is? I've done schools from, I've done like master degree program situations, and I've done like pre-K synagogue schools and everything wow. in between. So this could be. Just about any yeah. one of them. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know. Oh, so what do you do when you go? You basically talk about talk art, or you right? talk about Sesame Street. What do you talk about when you? See? Well, believe it or not, I, in such a, depending on where I am and what what the situation is, I kind of gear it to that. So in this case, I was talking to them about when I was a kid and how right. I loved to draw and how you know how continuing to do the thing that I loved as a kid. And I yeah. told them, I said, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be drawing. Whatever you love as a child is usually a hint to what you should, you might end up doing later on in life. And so right. for me, that it was drawing. And they, they, they're they riveted. And they ask the best questions. And I'm just, those kids are brilliant. I, kids yeah. are brilliant. She I do, you know, I do things. lots of school assemblies. But one of my favorite parts of the day is because the kindergartners are only half a day, sometimes you have to go visit them separately. And to just sit and draw for them and watch their eyes light up and, they're trying to throw its suggestions at you and everything. It's just such an inspiring <laughs> time for them. Here's yeah. a here's a beautiful little parallel for you and and kind of as coming up your dreams of wanting to be a part of something Muppets. Uh, Josh Hankemar says they'll be there forever like the NBC pipes. <laughs> oh man, how cool is that? Right? Great. Isn't that a beautiful thought? That's Thank a you, totally Josh. Thought, totally. I love that. I love yeah. that. Well, what do you think? I, I, I don't want to keep you here like, you know, I know Kevin has to go to Costco. He keeps saying it. but um, <laughs> I'm loving this. But this uh, is your show, so you. What do you, you think? Do, why don't we do two more two more numbers? I love spinning the wheel. Come on, Lewis. Yeah. Um, uh, Cookie Monster. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, 13. How about that? Oh, you got Cookie some? Monster. Hey. 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 This is a great story. This is a really good one, if I can oh, tell. Oh, good. You. Yeah. So anyhow, they decided that Cookie Monster was going to be the Healthy Habits Initiative character. Why <laughs> in the world would they pick oh Cookie Monster? Yeah. But they said, no, that's a good. It's, it's good because then he'll show that cookies are sometimes food, and he's going to eat his oranges first, you know, his healthy food first, and then have a. They said, but this is what they told me, Lewis. This time, no cookie in the shot. We just want. I said, wait, 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 wait. I see it. <laughs> This is Cookie Monster. He said, no, Lewis, you have to understand, we're trying to push this initiative, this the Healthy Habits Initiative. So, so, you know, cookies are sometimes food, but sometimes he doesn't have a cookie. He'll eat it I said, this is Cookie Monster. This is sacrilege. And they said, no, this time, no. I said, all right. But if you're looking back, yeah. I know that there's a... So I said, you know, I'll do it both ways. I'll do it with, you know, when we shot with John Barris, I'll do it with the cookie, and I'll do a version without the cookie. I said, wait a minute, right. no. I'm going to leave the cookie in. If they want to take it out, they're going to have to pay somebody to retouch it. <laughs> and, they, and they don't like to spend money. So, and then I explained it to them. I said, look, folks, you know how much I love Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster will eat the oranges, then he'll mm. eat the, the, the cookie. Then he'll eat the mm. basket and the napkin. You know how he eats. Right. If there's a cookie in the safe, <clears throat> he'll eat the safe to get to the cookie. Yeah. So, and they, they said, you know, you, you, you love him so much. We should have listened to you in the first place. <laughs> They gave oh, me what great. I wanted. That's great. Great. I love that. You know what you so reminded good. me of when you said Cookie Monster earlier? What was the what was the segment with Kermit and the little girl? He would say something. She'd go, Cookie Monster. Oh, yeah. That's what I was oh, thinking yeah. about, too. I, I thought she was the one. That was cute. You sounded you like that when with... you said it. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking, man. You guys are yeah, yeah. a real deal. Man. You channeled it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I do have one. Okay, I'm what? sorry. No. 
Please. I, I have one story. I don't think even Kevin knows this story. I know maybe right. you do, Kevin. Well, um, I'll try to keep it short because it go, kind of goes back to the whole thing with Julia, even before mm -hmm. I designed Julia. But I was, again, in, involved with kids on the spectrum in different ways. I went to the have principal for the day. And it's a program where, you know, you go and you kind of either shadow a principal, you go and do a presentation. I think it's primarily a New York thing. I'm not sure. But anyhow, I was asked to do it. Sesame Workshop asked me to do it. And I said, well, that'd be, that'd be great. Can I bring some a couple of Muppets with me? Now, of course, that's usually you don't get to do that. But they said, yeah, okay. In this particular case, do it. You know, as long as they're not taking pictures and doing that kind of stuff. So I had, I went ahead and did it. I had Ernie and, and Elmo with me. Now, I put them on to, display, to, to demonstrate, but I, I didn't do any because, you know, doing the voices is like really like almost illegal. <laughs> but uh, if you, especially if you can't do it. You know, I, don't know, yeah. I still don't know how this man came up with that voice. Well, but Kevin can't do it either, but, you know, <laughs> not anymore. But the, the I'm gonna love you. <laughs> that wasn't bad. <laughs> that was terrible. What it was really about? good. Do it again. That's like yeah. Prince. How yeah. do you yeah. say his name? Yeah. Yeah. Elmo loves you. That's really good. I love that. You sound like <laughs> his cousin you. when I used to do Elmo's cousin. But real quick, guys, because I hey, this is a Sorry. funny show, but yeah. but this no, this moment is really precious to me, and I'm gonna okay. try not to because you know, remember me, Kevin? I, I get choked up easily. Okay. So the thing is that anyhow, I went to the school with kids on the spectrum. I did drawings, and actually, I, I one of the things I did back then is that whenever kids wrote to the characters, they would ask me to to write back. Now, if they wrote to the Muppeteers, the Muppeteers would write back whenever they could. But whenever a kid wrote directly to the characters, that was one of the things I did. I said because they had one letter, they weren't going to do anything with it. They said, "No, I'll answer it." So I went and got their handwriting. And I did all that stuff. So I told the kids. On the spectrum in that school, they, I said, look, if you write to your favorite character, they'll they'll write back and send you a picture. And there were children in that class that they, they didn't want to even touch a pencil because their motor skills were not there. And they would drop the pencil. Or, and they did. But when they heard that, they would take both their hands or maybe just their wrist and they just do whatever they could to make a mark oh. on the paper. Think yeah, this that's not the best part of the story. It's a good part, though. Anyhow. During the day, and I brought out Ernie. I did again. I didn't do the voice, but I did. I showed her how the, a two-handed puppet works and how a rod puppet works. Mm. At the end, of the, there was a one woman that was with us for most of the day. Then she vanished after a while. She was so into him, saying, "Wonder why she left." And now, later in the day, I I packed up the cat, the, the Muppets, the way I'm supposed to, really, really well, you know, <laughs> taken care of, and you know, plastic and bubble wrap and. You know, so then, um, the woman comes back and she says, "Oh, you put the puppets away already?" I said. Well, yeah, you saw them already. I, you, I, but what happened? where did you go? What happened? So, well, my son, he's he's on the spectrum too, and he was in another school. I went to go get him because his favorite character is Ernie. But I guess it's you put him away. I said, but I ripped Ernie out of, carefully. I took Ernie out of the bag, and I had to. I did a little bit of an Ernie. I did. Hey, how you doing? That kind of a little, just a little bit. <laughs> and and the kid, the kid's like this, and I'm saying, oh my god, what did I do? I thought I did something wrong. And I'm looking at the mother, and the mother's like shaking her head, like. So I said, okay. So I, uh, I did a little bit more, and so keep watching the show. <laughs> and I, I looked up again, and she was so happy. Now, this kid was nonverbal. On the way, see, I almost lost it. On the way home, he started talking because he, he said, he said, Ernie, Ernie, my friend. He, he couldn't put a sentence together, but he, for the oh. first time in his life, started speaking. Oh and and God. then she she wrote, but she wrote me a letter to tell me this. And then at the dinner table, he couldn't stop trying to tell his family about how he met Ernie. Oh my! Trying not to cry here, I'm but sure. just to show you the the power of these characters. I mean, these are not just characters; these are international icons that has changed the world. And you know, God yeah. bless Jim Henson for for his I mean, Joan Gans Cooney, John Stone, all the people that put this show together. Kevin Clash came and, and just. That Shot guy. It to a whole other level. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. I mean, you yeah, know, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> but that that was the that was the the wow. That that's story. beautiful. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Right? There's, there's 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 wonderful wonderful. Uh, you know, ever since I started when I was ten, you Bill, you guys, you guys know this. You know, when you it, it, it's amazing what what the what these characters can do, uh, as far as the connection that children have all over the world. Um, I had that experience at the library when I was really really young. A mm. child never did anything and, you know, never, the parents didn't know. And then I had this big furry fluorescent pink puppet, you know, walk around and they, they noticed her following him and they were like, oh, wow, you know, wow. so it, it's, it's something that, that is this magic, beautiful thing that happens. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. And we get to be a part of it. We get to be you. Know, we get to be be you know. It's sometimes so even a fly on the wall. It's, it's yeah. wonderful. And I'm so glad grateful. you got Louis. I'm glad you get that's you know a wonderful story. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Wow. Well, that I think that's a beautiful Good way to, to end on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lovely. The work uh, you guys do. Also, you know, Lewis has bring, brought so much joy all over the world with his artistry and his 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 detail, extreme <laughs> detail and love and passion of what he does. You you could tell, you know, you could tell, and and I've been I've been very blessed to have him in my life for a long time and continue to. Wow, hmm. thanks, bro. Right back. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks for you guys for letting me surprise him. Oh, oh I'm man. so glad we didn't do anything. Somehow you hard. hacked into our system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 but Mr. Non-Technology over here. Yeah, right. <laughs> it wasn't hard to convince you, I can tell you that. I said, no. hey, Kevin, uh, Lewis is going to be, okay. <laughs> <laughs> love you, man. Love you, love you, love you. Love you. All, All right, right, guys, Kevin. thank you so Thanks much, Lewis. Me. Thank you so much for coming thank on. For we really thank appreciate you, you soon, mister. All, appreciate all it. more, more, more beautiful things. Can't wait to see what else you create going forward. Kevin, Me too. same with you, except hey. I don't really like you, but whatever you come up with hey. will be good. But Elmo yeah. loves you. Yeah, Elmo loves you, <laughs> too, right here with your Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Lewis. Thank you. All right. All Thanks right, so much, Thank Lewis. My pleasure. <laughs> he got me all, all choked up, too. Did I just wow. say right here with your Elmo? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> oh, well, that's what happens behind the scenes. <laughs> Man. All right. Last word on puppets. Oh, my God. How long have we been on? Hour and a half. Oh. Look at this. That was beauty. great. That was good. Not that I'm complaining. I'm just saying it's like. Yeah. I look up and the time just flies. I know, I know. Um, last week we had people of Puppet Heap on. Yeah. And I was, I, uh, you know, was looking at their website and all of that business. All that business. <laughs> and I, I ordered me one of them puppets. So yeah. I added her to my collection here. And that's, her name is uh, Patience. It's awesome. From one of their projects. And she's got a little Patience in her pocket there too. Uh, be a little patience. That's beautiful. Uh, wait, I just want to put something up. I, I just want to mention that. I just want, real quick. You can go to the Puppet Heap website and buy their puppets. Right. So a right. lot of them have, have sold out. So go there before the rest of them do. Um, take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lauren just said, I did not see that coming. Kevin made a surprise visit. That was the point. So think about that, folks. You never know who's going to show up here at the Beretta Brothers. That's his second surprise visit, right? So yeah. is that his wait, he's done the dinosaurs, then he had his own episode. Two, two parter. Two parter, and then the two surprise visits. Surprised you, and now this one. He's yes, yeah. he's our most uh off he's our you know who he's like? Guest. He's like our Bob Hope on the Tonight Show. Oh yeah. He'll just right. come in or Don you know. Rickles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, so mention uh our 30th episode. Okay. Right. Um, Gene has Billy Baloney. Yeah, Billy Baloney, Bert, Billy Ringo Puppet, and Patience back there. Below, Al Hirschfeld, drawn by the great Drew Friedman. Uh, next week is our 30th. Can you believe it, folks? 30th episode? And uh, we want your help. We thought, why don't we review these past 30 episodes and uh, ask you guys maybe – what your favorite moment has been in all of these weeks. It's been like five months. Has it been now? May 16th was our opening. Remember oh, that? Cause it was May the anniversary 16th. of Jim's passing. Oh, that's right. And uh, so was that was uh, June, July, August, September, October. It's almost six months. Well, right. five and a half. So anyway, I'm going to post in the next hour or so. I'm going to post the ad for next week's show on Facebook and go into the comments section and tell us your favorite moment from these 30 episodes. And we'll pick a few and, and review those during the course of the show, which will be, you know, a glorified uh, Q&A along with some clips and reminiscence. 
reminiscences, reminiscence, reminiscences. And we're going to have uh, two special guests, very special guests for to Gene and I. So those that's a little surprise as well. Yeah. All right. Javon? Yeah. All right, gang. Well, thank you so much again. And it was a, it was such a joy to see those guys together. You know, we, you know what, what this show does, it brings people together. Isn't that we wonderful? Had, we had Ricky Gervais and Constantine. Yes. We had Danny Trejo and his family and friends. And right. And his friends. We're all about bringing people together and family. Yeah. We had Tyler yeah. come on at one point, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm what? just going to pinch your head off. Ready? Why? Why? Uh. <laughs>